I'm Riley Harvey for VCN and we're back live with the Heroica series. Uh, tonight we're tackling the infamous Mont Ventoux. Um, only 24.47 kilometers, uh, but we have a slight bit of climbing to do this evening. So this will show who's got the, uh, the strength in the legs to carry on and push in on this series to take a mountain win. Uh, climbing win as we got Rob Miller, Ibanez Fernandez and Alex Plager on the front row here. Rob Miller pushes off hard into the early stages of this climb. Alex Plager going red does the same. Alex Plager, the Brasio racing team there. Mark Robottom, another Brasio racing rider, flies off the front. This is a long climb. It is not something to be um, tacked too hard from the offing something that would be um, nice to take at a good tempo and not to follow too many of these riders down the road and there's Ostergaard there the black sheep Newton and Mark Robottom still just uh, dangling off the front there Jan Decker's in the field tonight as well Renzo Simons in the mix Seen quite a few of the Rassio Racing Team shirts there tonight. I uh, wonder if this is a target that they've set for themselves tonight. Aggressively going after that is Dennett there up at the front. Oystensen towards the back. I've got Neil Turner giving a shout out for Team 3R and uh, Christophe Contant saying uh, En route les amis. I think means something along the lines of a uh, good ride, my friends. Uh, hello, Christoph. The Krajowski there. You can like to play your company. So across the bottom of the screen there, you can see the profile for this ride. Um, it is quite red. Alex Plager puts in a big turbo burn there. Jumps up to his teammate Mark Robottom. Takes with him Moss. Like this pair of Rassio racing guys are uh, trying to keep this. What could be a, just a grinding stage. They're trying to make it a bit more lively and uh, shake things up a little bit with some action in on these earlier flatter sections of the slope we descending slightly now on two very challenging but a, a little bit of stability in the front pack here Taking some scenery there. We're taking to the, the trees a little bit. We're just dropping back into the second group on the road. And see here we've got Olsen, Rosnaborski, Rob Miller, who was on the front line there. He's dropped back into this second group with Cobber up and um, Schilling. But Cobber up there is from the ECKD Danish Racing League. They've just come over on mass. Still racing, be cool. Um, but there are a lot of riders taking part in a big league that's been set up for the Danish Racing Club, ECKD, in RGT this year. And uh, you can see he's got BMX after his name there, which they've also separated into multiple teams on that group. See a rider there just coming flying up the side, come around that roundabout. That's a uh, Spiridinov. Spiridinov? I pronounce that name. I apologize all the time for the way I pronounce all you guys' names. I'm doing my best, but uh, sometimes can't get my tongue around it. Drop back from this group. We've got Eisenberg. Riding solo there. Got 
one from 40 meters from that group up in front. And Bailey chasing him down. So Bailey, I think, is um, the only lady rider that we've seen. Lady rider that we've seen so far as George has come past. And then we have Olsen. Houston. WTS. Camu. Uh, having a little look behind there. My own avatar, the move. Who's on? Now. Fernandez and we've got Williams there I think it's the last live rider but they're um, a little bit far back but they are putting out a decent wattage there so I wonder if they had a little bit of a hiccup at the start I'm gonna shoot back up to the lead group See Schilling now is active on the front. Damn it, Robottom still there. Renzo Simons making it across this group and a little bit of thinning now on this early slope. Well, Christoph saying good ride all and I hope you're ready to feel steady on the climb. It hurts me a lot after the halfway point. Um, it is a challenging climb. One bon two. I think um in general, Stelvio is preferred by most riders for the Everesting challenges because it is a slightly more consistent climb. I'm not crazy enough to Everest, so I could be completely wrong about that, but I do know there's a, a fair few riders out there in our GT land who do like doing the virtual Everesting. I know. One of my friends, Falk Levian, has, um, he was telling me the other day he did the virtual Everest thing on Paterberg, which is, I, I can't remember what number of um, climbs it was, but it was in the hundreds to get the 8,848 meters of elevation that you need for an Everest thing. Mm. And on the 20% slopes of Paterberg with your... Uh, Reality setting at 100%. That's some digging. I'd have to. I think I'd have to pass on that. So, I think we're missing some of the regular riders who are taking part in the Heroica series. It is an 8 of 12 series. So, there's 12 races in total in the series. But the way that the scoring's set up is that you can miss four of those races and still be victorious you can still win on the gc and um, because it's only your eight best races that count so we may find some guys have decided that they're going to uh pass on this perhaps this type of climb is not well suited to their riding style so they perhaps have passed on this one save the legs for another day See Lorenzo Simons, who was with this group, already dropped back into the group behind, and yeah, it's about 80 meters now. Caruso just rolls off the front of this group. Newton Ostergaard 
can see just in the distance there, you can just see the couple of pixels of the riders off in the distance. And Christoph's just saying, Paterberg is the hardest one in my opinion to ever rest. It's for a puncher and not too heavy. 12 roads. 12 live roads in RGT constantly. So I say 12 live roads constantly. There's um, some roads provided on the free version, which there's usually two roads or more on the free version. 12 roads in total for those on the paid for subscription. You can choose from the free roads do, do rotate. So if you're looking at um, free subscription and thinking about taking advantage of RGT, then those free roads do change around so you can get to enjoy all of the roads if you're patient. Normally set up in the way that you can have one of the flatter routes and one of the climbing routes. Make your choices from this little group of second group on the road now is fragmenting slightly. Caruso, Team ADR, just setting a slightly more aggressive tempo at the front, trying to make his way back to that lead group of four riders. He's taking with him Newton, Kovacic, Ostergaard, Simons, all sticking together here with uh, Rocket Roy Neal and Joris Shepers just slightly off the back. And uh, I think that's Wow Zugno is uh, saying it's going to be an exciting race. Thanks for streaming. It's no problem. We try and stream as many events as we can at VCN. Um, try and stream as, as much of the Heroica series as we can. And we also do try and do the West London on the Wednesdays and the PRT handicap races on Thursdays as well. And bring as many events into the public realm as possible. Um, now, all those guys out there watching, if there's any particular riders that you want us to zoom in on, any information that you, you'd like checking out, then just give us a shout. We'll move the camera around. Um, other than that, you're going to have to just put on with my droning for what's going to be probably about an hour long race. For the leaders, I think, around about the hour's time. Newton here putting out good power 330 watts heart rate up at 168 got Roy Neald the Moon Riders Rider Anna Zostergaard Black Sheep Lorenzo Simons Doing quite well in the overall standings. Just getting a shout out for um, check in on Olsen. Uh, not sure where they are in the group. We'll drop back now, see if we can pick out that rider Olsen. If anyone knows where they are, there are Shepherds there, Moss. Two of the Van Bears there. Not sure if they're related. They're both on Team Ratio. Wojowski, Keeble, and Schilling just running off the front there to try and catch up with Moss. Allard, Ibanez, who was off the front there. The earlier part of this race settled back a little bit, come into 20th position. Alex Plager, again, he was up there with Mark Robottom at the beginning. Gonna make it difficult for everybody. And then we've got Olsen. The black sheep. Uh, taking on this yellow jersey. Most of the teams now are trying to bring themselves, uh, choose themselves an individual jersey. They're easily rec recognizable in there. Peloton. Again, good power, power outputs from these riders in the 300s there for Olsen. 
Trading 7.7% there. Just stick with Olsen for a moment there, because it looks like he's going to catch up to Alex Plager. Covering the distance well. These flatter races don't allow for as much drafting benefit. So as we see Olsen making the catch with Plager here, if you keep an eye up on the top left hand corner, see that no drafting advantage at all shown for Olsen as he caught up to Plager there. Oh, just passing ore there. Fortunately, it looks like they've had some issues, some power outage perhaps. It's come to a stop by the side of the road. Hopefully, they'll be back in and racing soon. Just kept on watching Olsen there, and even when he drifted back there, back into the wheel of Plager, there wasn't any drafting advantage shown at all then. His power numbers, uh, no green power numbers were shown up in the top left-hand corner. Plager there, two of them working together, pacing each other. Krasnoborski, Rob Miller, and the sorry figure of all there. Yeah, they'll be back underway as Oostensen and Jan Decker go past. Cobber up, Olsen, Spiridonov in caught by Bailey there. Spirudinov made a, a big burst earlier on and covered some massive ground but they've eased somewhat perhaps uh, unfamiliar with the terrain. They're just uh, drifting back slightly. Uh, Pep Anderson He's just saying it's nice to see the black sheeps and it looks like Ostergaard has got his climbing legs on today as well. I'll have a check in on Ostergaard in a minute as well. Drift back and good Georges. Eisenberg. WTS. Camu and Houston all forming a little group here. With Williams a little bit further back on the road looks like he's gonna catch those guys he's been putting out some good power since he started this race um, he's way down in the field but I think that potentially he's had a little bit of a hiccup at the start maybe he wasn't able to quite jump on his bike at the beginning or realized he's forgotten his water bottle now who's on that's my camera bot. Nor am I. Fernandez. You're going to zoom all the way back up to the front of the race. See Dennett there. Dennett's put in a 
real compelling performance on this early third section has opened up a big gap of 180 meters to the chasing Schilling and Robotten. Uh, pushing out consistent 5, 5.1 watts per kilogram. Don't know if anyone checks um, Facebook, but there has been a video shared recently across on the Facebook group for um, Andrew Feather has done a, a video with GCN and they created the Magic Road of Outdoors on RGT and they tried to beat the time of Roman Bardet, who um, is the fastest IRL time holder up there with a phenomenal time. But um, if you get a chance to watch the video, I won't spoil it with you by saying how well Andrew does, but um, it's watching a rider on video and then seeing the power numbers that they put out through the virtual platform. It's, um, it's really quite amazing to see. Um, I'm sure there'd be questions raised if anyone was watching Andrew Feather or, or didn't know who it was when they were the racing against him in um, RGT. Then it continues to uh, open up a gap. He's gone from 160 meter gap up to 190 now. Gradient started to go slightly uphill again. So see where the team of Schilling and Robottom can work on these slightly flatter sections to close down the gap. Uh, Schilling that on this faster section, there is some drafting benefit there. He's saving 10, 10 watts ish off the back wheel of Mark Robottom. And that power saving shown up in the top left hand corner in the green wattage. And just manages to push away. I don't think he's intending to drop shilling there. I think it's perhaps just a missed gear, perhaps. A little bit of acknowledgement from Mark there. So Newton, Caruso, Miro here. Roy Neal just distance slightly. It's a team of three on the flatter sections we'll be able to push on well and benefit a little bit of a break in each other's wheel we're currently working hard to close that gap and get back to this team of three have complimented the yeah, Moon Riders guys in the past on the artwork that they've provided for Heroica. Um, if you're checking out the, the road fences and the banners, everything's just got a little bit of a, I don't know, je ne sais quoi. It's uh, nicely finished, it's a good colour scheme and just uh, it looks nice as the in-course branding just coming past some of the flags here. the road markings it's just all got a nice feel about it they've done a good job of keeping it all together and branding it nicely Roy there just a good measured effort himself back to the wheel of Newton Russo pushes on at the front of this group I don't know whether he's intending to drop them Francois Eicher, I thought it was the case, Francois. Um, Francois was just saying, um, go back, show a bit of Joris Shepherd. So 
We are just a couple of riders in front of him. We've got Ostergaard. Uh, Hep Sain's got his uh, climbing legs on today and it does look like he's climbing well. Eighth position overall on the climb. Riding a fixie as well. A big kudos to anyone who can ride a fixie at this climb. Kovacic on his wheel. The Black Sheep and Team 3R. And not too far back behind, we've got a little grouping of riders. Schilling. Just join up with Joris Shepers there. So Joris Shepers, um, Francois has just reminded me, is the rider who first he Everested this climb. And I think Joris did it such a long time ago. I think he was, did it before it was recognised by Hells 500, the keeper of the the Everesting. Um, but now, originally they only recognised Everestings taking part on, or virtual Everesting, should I say, taking part on Zwift. Now they recognise virtual Everestings taking part on RGT, and that could be a real road course, which is the easiest to do it on, of um, onto Stelvio, Atterberg. I mean, you could even do a virtual Everest thing on Borrego, but um, I'm not sure anyone's got the time to do that. Uh, yeah, Jerry Shepherds was the first one to do that. In fact, I think I rode for a little bit alongside him. Not very long, of course, because Jerry can climb and... Um, more of a flatlander, more of a couch potato really, but um, when I do ride, it's on the slightly flatter route. What one would refer to as a wheel sucker. Lorenzo Simons just getting slightly distanced here. And Kristoff is... Um, giving a shout out saying that reckons Danit could realize the one hour window TDB. So I've got the for all those who are new to RGTs. Lorenzo Simons just puts in a little burst there. Back to the wheel of Shepherds and goes past him. Just hunting around for the results. Uh, currently in the lead overall the golden jersey, jersey we've got Cedric Daniels Team 3R I don't believe I've seen Daniels in this race tonight as I say it's um, it's an 8 of 12 series so you don't have to race every race Jonathan Orr who unfortunately saw had a dropout earlier on is in second position overall currently with Alex Rockwell in third. And then there's Neil Turner in fourth. And Daniel Cadiz, who's another rider I don't think I've seen tonight, is in fifth. And Lorenzo Simons, who's on our screens here, is in seventh position overall. Lorenzo Simons, I hadn't realized, as, as upgrading himself to gold so the last time he, he raced in the Heroica series Lorenzo Simons was in the silver category and he did very well in that category and um, he won overall in silver the 
currently leading overall in the event and in the silver jersey is Cedric the Neils. Neil Turner in second. Kevin Cervelo in third. And Jonathan Orr in fourth. That's in the silver jersey. So sorry, yeah, rgtdb.com is a great resource for results and finding events and it also enables a lot of the event organizers to do a bit more in-depth results so Moonriders for this event have split the classifications up into six jerseys and uh, there's a Team GC jersey there's a golden jersey, silver jersey, green jersey, purple jersey and red jersey so, Got a lot of choice for these, and there is also a um, big difference for a lot of events. There's multiple time zones, so it happens in 7, 1, 8, and 9 p.m. Eastern Time, so it's uh, throwing me across there. But we've got different time zones to really open it up to a lot of different riders. Just flying back up, so we've just had Dennett on chat but down it there is pushing away still at around about five watts per kilogram heart rate 166 he's got a good high cadence there but I suspect he's using the slope intensity feature in rgt to allow him a bigger ratio of gears there with a cadence of 86 could possibly be riding rollers and uh Zuckner is saying that Dennett probably will go well under the hour with his power of around about 340 watts. Christoph Contant giving a shout out for Joris, uh, Lorenzo, Rob, Mark and Paul. And then we've also got uh, Cedric Daniels made one hour seven this morning with me. I led him until 15 kilometers and wasn't able to maintain the pace. And that's uh, from Christoph Contant. Christoph is a is a great climber as well. Christoph is a really good climber. So that's saying something if uh, Christoph was being dropped by Daniels. And Mark Robot and Schilling there, and group just behind are still together, still riding well. They're 400 meters behind Dennett. And it is really putting in some big power numbers and quite steady actually his power numbers here is he's riding really consistently as well. Uh, Mark Robossum 300 watts ish uh, around about 40 watts below the absolute power of Bennett, as we see Schilling just jumping forward slightly there. So our avatars on the screen don't tell the full story. Sometimes you do see some of the riders just going a little bit in front. Um, it's not always an attack. It can be sometimes just a rider standing up and stretching the legs a little bit, and which can cause a fluctuation in power and, and just lead them to go past the rider not intending to drop them or to, to push on. Chilling and Robot in there seem to be quite well matched, working together well. And Roy Neal, having caught the group up that was uh, just in front of him earlier on, is with Newton, Miro and Caruso, who was pushing on off the front of this group and had opened a little gap, is now trailing behind. Roy just avatar out of the saddle pushes on I don't know if I'm imagining things but when I'm riding with my cadence sensor um, my avatar does seem to more closely mimic my real life effort so when I'm riding I've got my cadence sensor connected it 
does seem like my avatar jumps out of the saddle when I do. Um, I know that a lot of technology, it, it is possible for them to sense. I mean, they can, they can tell now off the turbo whether you're pushing harder with your left leg or your right leg now. It's, uh, it's crazy how accurate these things have become. But um, yeah, I think it's possible for the avatars to, to mimic you more closely and tell when you've jumped out of the saddle. Tell me if I'm imagining things, but I, I think it's it's happening. I see Miro, Neil, and Newton there. I think they those three riders were a little bit more consistent in their power. Caruso just at the back there and tailing off seemed to be being a little bit more erratic. Um, he was pushing off the front and then being caught back by the group and then pushing again. He's in seventh position. It's a, it's a good position to go in. Not too far behind him though. We've got another shilling. So we've got a shilling up in second position with Mark Rowbottom. And then we have a shilling back in eighth position. They're both wearing the same shirt and both riding under the flag. Germany so potentially they could be related go up to a helicopter shot here get some idea of the distances between these riders I think Caruso is going backwards here and Schilling is running the effort I think Caruso is the little hair that he's chasing Russo's power bar there, you can see it's turned blue. I think he was just waiting for the rider is shilling there. It looks like he was very much waiting for him to have some company on the road. So I think he's given up on reconnecting with the group of three in front of him of Miro, Newton and Neild. Just took a breather there and has allowed himself to be caught by shilling in there. Turning to ride with them now. 9.93 kilometers remaining. Kovacic and Ostergaard still together, riding well. Lorenzo Simons there dropped Joey Shepherds in some fashion and been making a bridge cross to these two riders while we've been moving around on the front of the course. Lorenzo Simons there not hanging about at all. He's bridged up to Kovacic and Ostergaard. Continues powering here around this hairpin. So he's just eased as he got to the wheel of Ostergaard there. Just taking a breath. Be interesting to see whether Simon's oh now he's pushing on Lorenzo Simon's Ostergaard um like the two of them might be just pushing away from coverage there Simon's is not hanging about he's definitely got more power in his legs tonight. Perhaps he's done a negative split and is um, happy with the way he's rode the, the beginning course. Kovacic there. Unfortunately, that uh, seems to have dislodged him from riding in partnership with Ostergaard. 
And Simons has just upped the pace a little bit. Ostergaard's decided to go with him. As his teammate said, he's got his climbing legs on today. <clears throat> just some more chat coming through there. We've got Wayne Schnitzeling, uh, known as the King. For those who ride with him on Facebook. He's replying to Christoph Kontan. He's saying he feels the pain watching from my armchair. Uh, you'll see a lot more of Wayne knocking around now. He's, uh, he's had a little bit of a break from cycling for about nine weeks, but he's getting back into the virtual world and real world cycling. Helps run the smile on group on Facebook in RGT. Trying to encourage a lot more of our Australian friends to get into the world of RGT and uh, get the Southern Hemisphere busier. There's a lot, a lot more Australians taking part now in RGT. It's, a, it's an area that's built up a little bit more in popularity. Renzo Simon's looking strong in the second half of the race. He's um, paced himself well. And Wouta Clay's not racing tonight. He's uh, giving a shout out. Good luck all and go Rocket. Uh, that's Rocket Roy Neald, one of his Moon Rider teammates. Simons and Ostergaard there. Already put in 60, nearly 70 meters gap into Kovacic there. Kovacic Team 3R riding in their jersey. Uh, Joey Shepherds in 12th position. Say one of the first, if not the first, to Eve Everest, virtual Everest, this course. And then. Ibanez, 13th position. And out some good watts per kilogram. But has had a little bit of a slow start. He's just uh, making the second half pay. Just watching then as we zoomed in, saw Ibanez the, the bike wiggling as he was out of the saddle, and you could see that the bike was swaying from side to side as he was putting the power down. Not too far back. Behind Ibanez, we've got Moss. And Keeble. All these riders are in vision, in sight of each other. See there, Keeble can just see Moss. And Moss can see Ibanez just in front of them. Anything down at a gap of around about 150 metres or less, the riders can see the next rider in front. Over 150 metres then um, it is a little bit difficult to see them. The pixels tend to disappear from view. There is some new features being tested in RGT. I, th I think they've been implemented for devices with lower power. Um, they have started sort of vanishing some of the um, avatars when they're out of a certain distance. You can't see them as far. Um, that is to improve the, the overall quality of the graphics and the overall experience of RGT. Um, having all these animated avatars on screen can tax the power of some of the lower uh, devices. Um, and in order to include, you know, increase inclusivity and allow more and more people to use RGT, these tweaks have been in, implemented. So. Um, Yes, basically lower powered, older devices can still run RGT, but you might not get the full experience as you would from uh, an all singing, all dancing gaming PC. For, for many people, the ATV, um, Apple TV is a really great entry point device for the system. The, the newer 4K ones, um, they run in high resolution RGT really well and they're very simple to set up and get going with.
with Keeble. Krajowski is just behind again. He will be in the little carrot dangling eye in front. And then we've got, I think this is Rob Miller with Van Bears and Van Bears. Both Team Rassio Racing with Team 3R and their teammate Krajowski just in front there. Dropping back to Olsen, who's um, Black Sheep. If I remember rightly, I think Olsen's only just joined the Black Sheep team. Um, there's lots of teams around on RGT, and the majority of them have a Facebook page. You can join up. It's just, you don't have to be part of a team to take part in RGT events, but you know it can help give you motivation and introduce you to events. I know oftentimes it's, uh, it's my teammates, my friends that are responsible for getting me on the bike. As soon as I've made an arrangement with somebody, then I find it much harder to back out if I've only made the arrangement with, with myself. It's, uh, it's quite easy to say no and find uh, another reason to do something else. So Maillard there is, is closing in on the wheel of Olsen. I think I briefly touched on the power bars before. You can just see underneath Olsen's name there. Olsen's got green power bar underneath his name. These indicate the zones, the training zones, as per Coggins training zones. So you've got light blue, darker blue, green, yellow, red, and I think it's bright red which indicate where you are in relation to your FTP, your effort in relation to your FTP. The bluer colours, basically very easy tempo, but you're, you're riding very much within yourself, which we can see Olsen's doing currently is fluctuating between the blue and the green. So he's just riding very much within himself with below his FTP and um, at a comfortable pace. Mallard in the yellow zone means it's a little bit higher. I think yellow's just um, FTP and slightly above. Deep Mallard's making the effort to catch Olsen, whereas Olsen's tending to be riding a bit easier, but just as I'm saying this, Olsen puts in a bit of effort and maintains a bit more of a gap. Mallard's gonna catch him and Possibly go past. Krasnoborski in second position. And Jan Decker with his teammate Alex Plager. The Nick Greenhouse shirt uh, of Rassio Racing is. Cointon, it's nice work, Rassio Racing Team. Apologies for his son's perfect timing with his basketball team selection tryout. He really wanted to do this one. Um, and I think there's a little bit of sarcasm there as he's uh, finished it with a oh, weight. As Alex Plages just drops out there, he's, he's pulled over to the side of the road. And has gone to zero. Jan, relentless, continues on. And Alex has dropped down. I don't know whether he's. Uh, had an issue and he's going to be back or whether that's his racing done for tonight. <clears throat> well, Eastenson, Team 3R, good showing from Team 3R tonight. Um, they're doing very well in the team classification. A lot of good reliable riders at the moment. And Copper up. Olsen. Williams who is powering away and just slowly overtaking riders. Bailey. I think as I said earlier on, it's Bailey I think is the only
Uh, Bailey's the only female rider. Yeah, unfortunately, the purple jersey, which is for women only, Karen Bailey is the only person competing at the moment. Um, doing fantastically, but um, they're the only lady. We are trying to encourage as many ladies as possible to take part in events across the whole of RGT, not just the Moonriders events, but Moonriders have made the effort to create a category, a classification for the ladies so they can have a competition. Uh, alongside the main GC competition as well. Karen Bailey has turned up, competed and um, smashed it in every one. Spirit and off. WTS. Georges. Houston. Of Heisenberg. Luzan. And then with Fernandez. I can't see too much change happening in these positions further down the course. Um, so we're gonna fly back up to the front and check out what's happening. We see Dennett is still in the lead. And they are Dennett of team AESRT. Good solid cadence and power, just I think slightly lower than we were seeing earlier on. Uh, was around about 340 from Dennett. So perhaps they are starting to fade a little bit. Um, Heart rate around about 160, 66, 68. <laughs> Nick Greenhouse is just giving a shout out to all of the riders. Massive kudos to the riders taking part in this. It's a brutal slog. Uh, the Vin Show awaits you at Lavenderen just below the summit and keep taking the Haribo. I think the, the Vin Show would be hot wine, or maybe a, a mulled wine perhaps. Is there, a, is there a famous place for mulled wine on this course? I think any kind of wine would be acceptable after you just smash this course, but um, a warm one would probably be preferable. No doubt going up towards the snow line. it now with only 2.65 meters to go and uh, Zukna is uh, giving a shout out for Arno to keep going see the weather station up in the distance there um, I think it's uh, Zhao Zukna Then it digs in 5.7 watts per kilogram. Perhaps just taking a moment, ride out the saddle, stretch the legs. 53 minutes in, 2.4 kilometers left to go. And you wonder whether you'll just be able to sneak it under the hour mark. I think it's gonna be slightly longer. So I think the fastest time from today is one hour, seven minutes. Be interested to see whether Dennett would be able to go underneath that. And just dropping back, we see Schilling here has managed to drop Mark Rowbottom. Mark, Mark in distance by 4. Point, sorry, 4.7 kilometers, 470 meters by Schilling. 
the alliance that they had didn't last until the finish line. Mark that in third position, which I'm sure we'll be happy with. Got 754 meters from the second shilling on the field. We've got M shilling and uh, B shilling in second and fourth now. I'm sure B shilling will be desperate to get onto the podium. Matthias Fishback is saying, Christoph, content, your one hour nine minutes on Monvon 2 is still killing. I'm glad that Egan Bernal beat me on my home climb by only nine minutes two weeks back. And one has to put things into perspective. Yeah, some of the um, professional riders just uh, beyond words. I guess if you're doing something every day, you, you need to be uh, pretty good at it. I've done it now. 1.6 kilometers remain. I think we'll stick with Dennett until he finishes this climb now and then we can drop back and see the other riders as they're finishing. Um, decent gaps in between the rest of the field so we can give them a little bit of air time each. And Felty is saying it. Good job, Arno. Keep pushing. And uh, MD the Tank is saying have a great ride. I'm sure most of you guys have figured this out now, but back at VCN headquarters, we've got um a collated chat so all of your chats all your messages that you send in through um twitch youtube facebook they all come through to the same local chat window so i can give you a shout out as i say if you want us to focus in on any particular rider we'll do that for you um, or any answer any questions that you have in general about rgt we'll try and help with those as well Let's see arno the scenery going more and more rugged, mountainous. You can see the Flam Rouge there up in the distance, just around that hairpin. Very desolate and windswept now, all those trees that we saw earlier on on the lower climbs disappearing just bushes bare barren rock then it's heart right now just beginning to climb up as he's putting his last efforts in the radar station in the distance there And this is the first time we've seen his heart rate up above 170. Right, there's um Zugna there saying who can beat Arno? Putting a beast of a performance here. Power been fairly consistent around that 340 watt mark. Five watts per kilogram. I think we're into the section here with the <clears throat> segment when you ride it for the, the real road outside of a race. Oh no, heart rate now just creeping up as he empties the legs. 173. How much more has he got to give? Four hundred and fifty meters.
Uh, Zuckner saying his best time is around one hour and two minutes. We've still got 360 meters left to go here. Then it's going to beat it, but I don't know by how much. Wonder whether he's got a sprint left in his legs still. Is it coming around this hairpin? That iconic view. 250 meters left to go. Just clocked over the hour. And it comes through in a fantastic time of oh keep going down it keep going i think we might have a small error there we, we appear to have finished but um the finish line is still in front of us so i think dennett has finished there his time has frozen up one hour and 34 seconds so shilling just coming through now Sorry about that, folks. Um, I think that RGT, I'm not sure actually. It looks like RGT have positioned the finish line just slightly um, further than it really is. Um, I will look into that after the stream's finished. The shilling's coming up now. Mark Robottom still 600 meters behind, so it's comfortably into second position. 4.4 watts per kilogram. No heart rate monitor for Schilling here, so we can't see how hard they're pushing in relation to their absolute max. Cadence, again, fairly high cadence, up at 88, 87 on a slope of 8%. So there is a slope intensity slider in RGT where you can adjust the slope intensity it doesn't lessen the effort that you have to put in you have to put in the same amount of watts to get up the slope but it, it gives you effectively virtual gears so you can maintain a, a higher cadence than perhaps you you normally would have done if you're riding it in real life and there is also the possibility there's power rollers out there as well which don't replicate full gradients the same way. I think most power rollers can only go up to something like 6%. Obviously, there's issues. You're not physically attached to them. So if they, if they whacked in too much uh, resistance, you might go flying off the rollers. Chilling. Just uh, going out to a wide shot there to see if we could catch Mark Robottom in the distance. Chilling there. Coming up on the weather station. I suspect that Schilling is going to do the same thing here and stop just short of the actual finish banner. Now three minutes so far. And yeah, Schilling stops there. Ah, uh, three minutes thirty-two. It looks like visually we've got the I've got a slight error with the finish line there on RGT, which will be raised as um, quickly as it can, and we'll get that resolved. We, I won't get it resolved. It'll all be down to the work of RGT, but the way RGT work, it will not be an error for long. Mark Robotten coming through here. Third position. Great riding, good pacing.
good tempo all the way up here. Wasn't quite able to stick with Schilling. We missed that decisive move by Schilling. Schilling broke away from Mark Rowbottom. Nevertheless, Mark Rowbottom with Brasio Racers here. And in a fantastic time. And he's still got a little left in the tank for a sprint here. 580 watts. And he crosses the finish line. Hour and five minutes, seven seconds. And Christoph Contan just informing us that the um, the similar error happened this morning with the finish line. So uh, just a little flaw in the GPX that RGT is running. They've got the the digital finish line that we can't see isn't quite married up with the visual finish line that we can see. So chilling now comes through in fourth position, but Caruso, who had dropped off the group behind, has somehow found in his legs to overtake that group and get back to the wheel of Schilling. Uh, it's some, some effort that's been put in there by Caruso. Caruso, fly forward, Schilling up at a heart rate of 182. They're obviously near their limit of power there as Caruso just fades again. I have noticed this from Caruso watching their performances. They do seem to have um, an all or nothing approach, uh, full power and then diminishing somewhat. Schilling continues, Schilling up at 5.8 watts per kilogram. I think they're aware of the, the danger posed by a rampaging Caruso behind them. Schilling now looking assured of their fourth position, but Caruso there just fading away, chilling up 185 heartbeat, 150 meters to go. Chilling there, just making it over the line. Finish next to his namesake with Caruso coming through in fifth position. And then Newton just managing to break away from the group as well. So Newton now just piling on the power. Managed to break away from Miro and Simons. Simons having had a, a fantastic second half of the race, really paced it well. Getting himself up into eighth position at the moment, but who can tell that might all change in a moment as Miro and Simons are opening up their Watt Locker. Miro leading Simons out. Could that be dangerous as Newton goes? Um, in a pairing this close, could this error with a finish line be their undoing as Simons just overtakes Miro and makes it across the line. And Roy Neal now racing for ninth position. Uh, Sergip Cycling Club is just asking there, is it still possible to use RGT for free or is it gone now? It is definitely still possible to use RGT for free. Um, there are features limited in it and the number of courses that you can ride for free are limited. But if you head over to rgtdb.com as a free user, you can see hundreds of events that take place on all different courses across RGT. And you can jump into any one of those. As a free user, you can join in and use any of the events, any group ride, any race. And using that little cheat, you can ride on any of the courses for free. You are obviously limited to events that are scheduled by other people, but um, there's loads happening all the time that you can take part in. Also, you can join a team perhaps like the um, VCN, Team Time Trial Teams, which are quite often looking for riders. 
and again using the that little cheat you can be a part of a team and one of the other team members will set up races on the magic roads and you can take part and join in on loads of different roads for free um, you aren't able to schedule your own group rides or races and you aren't able to create your own magic roads but there's um there is a, a heck of a lot for free in rgt still sorry did it go on a bit too much there cycling club there's kobe chicks coming over the line in 11th position i've got a decent gap in back to very shepherds here is Comfortable in his third, uh, 11th position there. Kovacic of Team 3R. Over the line there. Got a Shepherds. 12th position as we said he was the first guy to virtual Everest on this course and I think it was done before the Everesting club recognized RGT as a platform that they'd allow Everesting on um, it is recognized now so you can go out and virtual Everest to your heart's content on Stelvio um, Pienza Mont Ventoux and um, get in as many meters of elevation as you need. If that's your if that's your bag, if that's the pain that you enjoy climbing for hours on end, then it's out there for you. As Joe Shepherds comes over in an hour, it's just going to be about an hour and twelve minutes as we come up to the finish line. We've got Rob Miller a little bit behind. Gary Shepherds comes over there. I'm going to drop back to Rob Miller. Christoph Contant giving a shout out to Rob Miller there as he comes over in 13th position. Team 3R, as I say, I think they're running, running, leading the um, team category in the competition. Moss, you know, Moss wearing the Southborough District Wheelers shirt there, SDW shirt. Uh, Mateus saying that um, Rob Miller's smashed it again and such a strong rider at his age. He's uh, giving big kudos. He, he bows down to him. I'm not sure how old Rob Miller is, if uh, anyone wants to inform me. As Ibanez is coming over the line in 15th position. Wayne Schnitzling giving a big shout out. Congratulations all. Bring it home, Rob. And it's nice to see so many people of all ages and countries giving it a red hot go. The Ibanez coming over the line now. Yeah, I'm just checking in the team classification. We've still got Leading the classification is uh, Team 
R3R with their Credence team who are absolutely smashing it in the front there. Van Bears comes over and then Keeble. And Olsen who black sheep over the line. Just coming up in an hour and 15 minutes now. Olsen putting it all on the line for this last little effort here. And Van Bears with Krajowski. A little bit of inter-team rivalry here as Van Bears puts down the power and just takes off from Krajowski. Krajowski not giving up just yet though. Eager to close the gap all the way up to the finish line. Van Bears in 19th, Krajowski in 20th. And Mallard coming through in 21st position. Just got some chat coming through. As Nick Greenhouse she's saying, um, yes, Joey Shepard's awesome. Mark, sensational, as he should be. It's hill climb season, and he's having a good start. Uh, if possible, can we plug the Brasio Friday Racing Series 4 starting this Friday? Um, the details are on rgtdb.com. Brasio Racing Fridays. The, the link is in the chat there on Facebook. <clears throat> Teams, four riders, top two score, Open GC and Vets GC. All right. That's the Rassio Racing Fridays going into its fourth season. Um, I think it is a 6.30 start. If you could shout back, Nick, and just confirm the, the start of that event on the Fridays. Um, just early enough for you to get it out of the way and recover before going to the pub. And uh, gives you some free calories, some good calories to enjoy over the weekend. As Krasnoborski comes over in 22nd position. And Jan Decker a little bit further down on this climb. Is in 23rd with 1.48 kilometers left to go. You can see here at this point the, the greenery just thinning out and those iconic rocks, that moon type landscape just coming into view. So yeah, Nick Greenhouse just confirming. So the, the Rassio Racing Series on Fridays is at 6.30, details on rgtdb.com. You can go into rgtdb.com and look at the events. So it shows results as standard when you first go in there, but if you, you scroll down, you can see events. You can select Friday and you can look through for the Rassio Racing Series. And you can join in, you can, there's a link through rgtdb.com and that'll link you through into RGT to join up for the events. The races are around about 30 to 45 minutes crit style racing. So that's a uh, fast action paced, lots of changes in tempo, keeping your wits about you, but they're only 30 to 45 minutes. So you can really get yourself deep into a hole and um, still recover in time for your weekends riding. The Jan here. One meter, 25 left to go.
Uh, Cobra up there is looking like he's gaining somewhat on Yandaka. Gap of 44 meters. I just showed a brief advert there for our friends over at Precision Rewards. Help out with streams. <clears throat> if you're interested in checking out Precision Rewards, precision-rewards.co.uk. Um, it's just basically it's a free way of getting discounts on lots of cycling equipment and cycling nutrition. I'm a big fan of the Uperform collagen gels, which thanks to Precision Rewards to get a discount on. Um, really boring. I'm going bald, but the hair that I have got is, seems to be uh, sticking around a little bit longer. Um, also, like strength of the nails and uh, longer taking of collagen. It's it's looking like it's one of the best researchers looking like one of the, the, the things that's coming through in more recent years as being pretty effective in helping to maintain your muscles, your, your ligaments, your, your joints. Uh, if you're not already taking collagen, it's worth having a look at it. Our bodies don't produce it as fast as we get older and that leads to us getting a bit more injured and not recovering as quickly. It's Jan Decker, been passed by Cobra up there but is not giving up. Cobra up seems to have eased slightly in, and Yandek has kept on at a fairly consistent pace. 750 meters left to go. Cobra up's power there fluctuating quite a bit. Yan now just brings it up steadily, closing that gap and Cobra up. Around this hairpin. Four hundred and forty meters left for Yandaka here to reel back in Cobra up and take that place back. seem to be possible for Jan to overhaul this gap. Cobra up, cobra up, going past that last hairpin. But the finish line in sight, 150 meters to go. And a gap of 75 meters, 70 meters back to Jan Decker. Um, Jan Seemingly left it too late here if, he, if he's going to make any effort. Cobra up pushes through. An hour and uh, uh, 23 minutes 31 seconds, and Jan Decker. not quite able to overhaul that gap that cover up had pulled on him. See Williams there, 25th position. You back down now, Misty. Unfortunately tonight with the, the length of time that the climb up Von 2 takes, we're not going to quite be able to see all of the riders home. See uh, Ostensen and Olsen cross the line. 
But after that, I think we just have to have a, a name check through for everybody. And production to a close. The Joris Shepherds just giving a shout out for the organizers, Moon Riders. This is their regular slot for this style of event. They do a number of the Heroica series throughout the year. They have got a tour coming in December. So I um, can't remember the full details on it, but they've got a tour coming up in December. They do a number of these um, best of events throughout the year. So as I say, this one, for those who aren't familiar with the format, um, there's 12 races in the series. Your eight best races count. Um, that could be that you know you race all 12 and just your eight best count, or you could decide to dip out on some of the events that you're not particularly favorable to that don't suit your riding style. Like there are a few of the riders in contention for winning the GC overall in this event who've who've dipped out of the climb tonight, preferring perhaps flatter courses or perhaps punchier courses. Ush Stenson is coming home in 26th position for Team 3R. As I say, these guys are leading the team classification by some way. Uh, Wayne Schnitzling is giving a shout out to Karen Bailey who's holding the flag for all the ladies. Good job. And we gave some time to uh, Karen Bailey earlier on, a little bit of air time. We'll give her some, another shout out on the way back down. Stenson comes across the line. Back with Olsen. Seventh position. Landscape here, you can see the radar that golf ball just back in the distance. There, there's all some powers at home. Olsen now <clears throat> just coming in under the hour and a half Thirty-seven, one thousand five hundred and ninety-three meters climbed. He's dropping back now with WTS. He's going to go around and give all the remaining riders on the climb a little shout out. Um, we would love to see all the riders home, but unfortunately. I don't have limitless time. It's, um, it is a long race to cover the race up on two. See WTS now cranking out the watts with 1.5 kilometers remaining. Nice and steady. Then we've 
Karen Bailey. Ryan in the Moonriders kit. Um, I'm not sure if Karen Bailey is actually a member of Moonriders. It's the uh, Above and Beyond Cancer kit, which uh, the Moonriders have adopted as their team kit. Karen Bailey, the only female rider taking part in this series at the moment. So hopefully we'll see a few more riders, a few more ladies taking part in the events in general. And that React are having a push, that's uh, the React coaching. They've got a, a new e-racing team for lady riders coming to the RGT this season. And um, they are offering a lot of support. They have only, I think, six positions in the team, but um, they are offering support to any lady riders who are interested in getting into virtual cycling um, with training plans and, and other things. So if you go over to the React website, um, check it out. You can get loads of information there. If you're a lady interested in cycling, there's um, loads of resource there and help for you as well. And Spiridonov, who made a massive burst earlier on in this race. And it's just, um, after that, it's just been slowly sliding backwards. And looked fairly comfortable in this position, in 30th position. Um, and putting that fairly consistent power now for the for this section of the race. But they were doing some bursts of high power earlier on. Perhaps new to climbing the on two and weren't sure of the the efforts required to sustain that all the way through George's 31st position Suzanne in 32nd. These uh, lower slopes of Mont Ventoux, much greener, much more scenery. Fernandez in 34th position. Upon the saddle and powering away. So I hope as usual you've enjoyed watching VCN and this event by Moonriders. You've uh, been inspired to get on your bike and do a little bit more riding and perhaps attack Mont Ventoux yourself. The time there, just over the hour for the lead riders, that will give anyone a challenge. And I hope to see you out on the road next time. If you haven't already done, if you'd like to sign up for YouTube, VCN, um, give us a follow. We're also on Twitch and a number of different platforms. If you give us a follow, really appreciate it. Um, and if you check out the Facebook page, we usually have some other information going on there, not just streams, there's some reviews, uh, some information about RGT gets posted as well as it comes to light. And we hope to bring you some uh, snippets of information about other platforms as well. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time on VCN.